What's going on growers? James Piccioni coming to you live from Jersey. The gardens are all planted. The fruit, it's starting to ripen. And the harvest, they're starting to come in. Today is gonna be an awesome day. Let's go. Today, I wanna to start things off in the new food forest with the square foot beds that we put in recently and they're doing excellent. I wanna show you in this front all the spinach that we're getting and we're getting too much to even eat, me and Tuck, so. What we're gonna do today is just harvest just a, a lot of it and then give it all away and freeze some of it or something. We're gonna try to preserve it, do something with it because it's too much to eat right now. In the beginning, we can keep up with it, but then it just gets to the point where you can't keep up with it and we don't want it to all start flowering. So we're just gonna harvest a lot of this and we got something else that we're gonna replace in this section. So we're gonna put some of that spinach in there. I got a lot more to get, but I wanna bring you over to the lettuce because I'm gonna grab some of that too. So here's the lettuce right here. Let's grab some of it. And what I'm gonna do is just harvest one of these heads here. And when you're growing lettuce, when it gets hot in the summer, you're gonna to wanna to grow your leaf lettuces. Your leaf lettuces do better in the heat, probably because their ability to unfold and space themselves better. So what I'm gonna do is grab this nice head of lettuce right here. It's gonna be a beautiful salad for us. So basically every night I'm gonna be able to eat salads, but I'm gonna harvest a bunch of heads tonight to get, give away. So then I'll plant that. Then in the same section, I make sure that I have another round of lettuce to plant. I've always got staggered plantings of lettuces. So I'm constantly harvesting different ones. You wanna make sure you're doing that. So I'm gonna pull this out where the lettuce was. Be really gentle. Shake off the soil as much as I can. And then I like to do it like this where I plant and harvest at the same time. Ideally, I would be doing this at night because uh, that's when I like putting my lettuces and stuff in so they transplant better but I'm just gonna do it right now just to show you how I do it. This way I make sure I'm planting and harvesting at the same time, so we're always looking towards future harvests. And I'm gonna put my mycos in, sprinkle it on the roots right there. Just dig it in, tuck it in, and then I'm planting and harvesting at the same time. So we're always looking towards the future. Let me just finish tucking this lettuce in. And then you'll notice in front of me we've got some big, beautiful onions here. And I have a lot of flowers mixed in. I've got nasturtiums, poppy, calendula, marigolds, all different stuff. Just adding to the variety, the diversity of everything. And you'll notice we have a bunch more lettuce planted in here, carrots, and cucumbers are looking fantastic right next to me. In front of me here, we've got a ground cherry. This is a really fun one there. That's kind of different, but really good to eat. It's a delicious one if you've never tried it. I'll show you some of the fruit as the year progresses along. Some basil next to that and then peppers too. And then next to here we've got some purple dove beans and more lettuces and stuff, cilantro. And look at the size of this, uh, look at the size of this parsley. I think it's called like mammoth parsley or something. These leaves are just ridiculous. It's a flat leaf Italian, delicious flavor. And that's just from some of the soil a little bit. So if we wipe that off and then I'll take a little bite of it. See how it tastes. Mm. Good flavor, a bit mild, but good. What would be a lot better tasting than this would be some fresh strawberries. I think there's some ripe. This Shuxin variety of strawberries over here, they've got so many on it, and soon there's gonna be just a plethora of them that are ripe, but they're not ready yet. This variety I have right here next to me has a couple of them that are ripe, and I can't wait to eat them because strawberries are my favorite, favorite thing to grow. That's why you'll notice throughout the food forest, they're always just blanketing the ground. That's my ground cover. That's one of my favorite things to eat. Strawberries, blueberries, peaches, pears, so good. This one's pretty close. I mean, it's not perfectly ripe, but that's okay. Not eaten by the birds, and you can see I have the rock right next to it. There's a, a bunch of other ones that are close too. So within a few days, we're just gonna have more strawberries than we could imagine. For these ones, I just pop the top off and then and throw the whole thing in my mouth. That's what you wait all year for. That's what you put all the work and everything into. So worth it. I know it's one thing I talk about all the time, but I do because it's important. Variety selection is huge, no matter what you're growing. Strawberries, blueberries, zucchini, anything. So right here, we've got a lot of blueberries. These ones are looking fantastic. It's got a number that are just starting to ripen up on it. And it's a pretty young plant, so it's encouraging to see the amount of production on such a young plant. These ones have even more on them. And like I said, blueberries are one of my favorite things to grow. If you're in New Jersey, you have to grow blueberries. And this plant right here doesn't have many on it this year, but I'm sure it'll set up for next year. Its buddy next to it is just loaded 
Look at that, so many blueberries. So blueberries and strawberries next to each other. As I move forward through the food forest, you'll notice it's filled up so much. A lot of you have been here since the start of this one, just only a couple years ago when I put it in. The perennials, they're setting up for the future. Some of the strawberries, those perennials, the blueberries, we're getting harvests, but the, we're also getting a lot of the annuals while we're waiting for that stuff. So let me show you some of my brassicas in this front corner. Most of them are doing real well. You'll notice a few spots that we have some bites. This is from the cabbage lopers, the cabbage worms. So we're working to eradicate that. It's basically just a life cycle where you have the worms, they're on here, and then they turn into little butterflies, those, those white butterflies that you see flying around, the white moths, and then they come and lay eggs and the whole cycle just repeats itself, repeats itself. So what I do is I go around with a net, uh, me and Tuck, and we chase around the white butterflies and we catch them. It's pretty fun actually. So we get a lot of them like that. And then we also check in the mornings where we can see the cabbage worms because in the mornings when it's cool, they'll be on the top more. When it's hot in the sun, they'll be hidden so I come out in the morning, check them, and just take them out and feed them to the chickens if there's any. But you'll notice here, a lot of the purple brassicas seem to be doing better. So they don't get affected as bad. So a lot of that stuff is still doing great. I'm sure we're going to get a nice harvest out of it. This is the cabbage section, all the brassicas. We still have some Swiss chard and stuff too. But as we move this way, we've got a different stuff planted too. This is one of my favorite varieties of lettuce. You'll notice these planted everywhere. This is the bib lettuce, so I love this one so much. It's a nice buttery lettuce. So I'm gonna harvest some of those and we'll eat some of those for dinner too. And then we've got some Swiss chards, a number of different uh, kinds and varieties. In this one section, you can see we've got like that bright red one and then the, the orange wood and then the classic Ford hook Swiss chards. And then I've got some different kinds of poppies next to it too. So diversity, not only for, for um, overall yield and stuff, but also because I love seeing it and it's fun to do. Back here is my favorite kind of beans I talk about a lot. These are the dragon tongue beans. One thing that's surprising me a lot though is some of the fruit on the trees in the food forest. Some of the young apple trees, they've got really nice looking fruit on them, especially for how young they are. Let me show you that. As I step past this peach tree, you can see the backyard. It's definitely not a lawn anymore. It's changed and it's producing a lot of food and it's so much fun to be a part of it. And I wanna thank all of you for being a part of it also. Right in front of me here, we've got some black cap raspberries. This is loaded, but you gotta see the ones in the side garden. The amount of black cap raspberries is just insane. So I plug some tomatoes in in the ground there, right next to some of my apple trees. And this is one of the apple trees I wanted to show you. Some beautiful looking fruit on it on such a young age. That's real encouraging to see. Looks like it's a good tree. That's why you get the right varieties, bare root from reputable places the first time. It'll save you. And as we move forward, we've got some more tomatoes actually right below me here. Some nice looking tomatoes that we just plugged in the other day and rows of tomatoes here. I've got some cool ideas with how we're gonna be tying up those tomatoes this year. So if you wanna see that, let me know. Those should be nice rows. And as I move forward, this pear tree has a little bit of spots on the leaves, so we'll have to look into that, but I think it'll get over it. And this section here, I'm still working on. I just pulled out my radishes and harvested a bunch of those the other day. So now we're gonna re replace it with something else. And in this corner here, we planted some beds of cucumbers and watermelons and some sunflowers and stuff. Now let's move into the main food forest and show you some of the stuff in there. As I step into the old food forest, it's like stepping into a whole new world, this paradise of food and everything. Below my feet, I put some more tomatoes in, five or six or so, and they're doing real well. Just move the wood chips out of the way and put them into the ground. Right here, we've got a young apple tree with a number of nice apples on it. Again, encouraging to see. And this is either Enterprise or the Honeycrisp, I forget exactly, but I know it's one of those good ones. And this raised bed that we put in, it's doing real well. You'll notice I took the cover off. The temperatures at night have really picked up, so I only need the cover on top when it's in about the 50s at night. So the temperatures really increase, so I don't think it's necessary anymore. And I want to bring you over to this section here because I think we have some carrots and some beets ready. So I'm going to see if Tuck wants a beet. Hey Tuck, you want a beet, boy? Tuck, want a beet? Where you at, boy? Tuck, you want a beet, boy? There he is. I'm sure he dug a hole somewhere and was <laughs> hiding underneath it. Hey boy, you want to try a beet? So when it's warm like this, because it's getting hot, Tuck just hangs out in a section, digs a hole. We gotta make sure we get some water for him too. You wanna try a beet boy? I'm not sure if he even really likes beets, but let's grab one. If you wanna come in right here, I'll show you. We've got a couple of different beets. You can see how they're all grouped together. And since the soil is soft, the soil kinda, the beets kinda push the soil out of the way. So you can grow a couple of them in one small section. So it's not a huge beet, but I'm sure it'll be nice and sweet. We should clean this off. I want to try it too, because the golden beets are supposed to be one of the best flavored ones. Let me try a bite and then see if Tuck wants a bite. A little dirt, but a little dirt, no hurt. Mmm. Wow, very sweet. Nice root, earthy flavor to it. Very good. 
This guy's gonna like it, I think. Hey, Dougie. So, let's see. He's kind of just going for the greens more. Let him figure it out. We'll see what happens. It just looks like he might be playing. I'm not sure if he's actually eating it, but either way, it looks like he's having, having fun. I was thinking about grabbing Tuck a carrot, but I actually want to eat one myself. So, I'm gonna find a nice one. One with a nice fat stalk on it. Help space him out a little better. This one looks decent. It's got a nice shape to it. Nice shape. I mean, it could get a little bigger, but I'm getting antsy. So, again, I'm not worried about a little bit of dirt. Whatever. It's not gonna kill me. It's gotta have some kind of vitamins in it. Minerals, too. Mmm. Super, super sweet. I know bugs want some, so. But you can see how much Tuck actually likes the carrots if, uh, if, if, he, if he really, if I don't give it to him, he goes nuts. <laughs> He's off. Let's finish the tour though. Looks like it's his carrot now. This section right here, I still have the top on it and I'm propping it up a little different way than I've shown. This isn't a way I suggest doing it, but it works for me. I have the, uh, the hinge right here or the handle and then I'm just propping a piece of wood in the back to keep the handle up and it seems to be working. The hazelnuts, some of them have hazelnuts on them now and they're already showing it, which is exciting to see. And I can't wait to actually see a lot of them starting to set up. I can't find that many on this tree yet, but it might be a little later. On the other tree, I see a bunch of them though. So this tree mu must be just like a little earlier. And they're all up here in these sections here. So I'll have to zoom in because they're just still really small, but you can see maybe some here. See, right, right there will be a set of them. And then another, another set right here. And then on the same branch, another set right here. And each one has like four or five hazelnuts and then behind it up there. So it looks like we've got better pollination than we ever have, which is fantastic. The fig is opening up and looking really big. And one thing that's shocked me this year is how big this Asian pear has gotten, but also how big the persimmon tree has gotten. The persimmon tree just blew up, double, maybe triple the size. Look at this. I remember taking this persimmon tree and wheelbarrow on it over from my friend's house when it was just a small little tree. Now it's, now it's a monster and there's gonna be so much fruit. Look at this. There's gonna be an insane amount on here. Now I want to just move through and show you the rest of the food forest just real quick as Tuck's in here hanging out with me. And this cherry tree is really getting tall because it's trying to apex over the, over the hazelnut tree so they're in a little bit of competition. But if I had to take that out in the future, that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. The hazelnut is one of my pride and joys. That thing is a monster. So this apple tree right here is doing real well this year and the grapes are about to open up their flowers. It looks like they have too many grapes. I'm gonna to have to come through and thin a lot of this or it's not gonna get enough airflow in this section here. That's happened to me in the past and I don't, don't wanna make that mistake again. And the peaches this year, holy, these peaches, they've got so many peaches on this year. This might be the first year I have to thin because uh, they're just loaded. So many on there. It's just such a beautiful thing to see. I hope we can get a lot of peaches this year. That would be awesome. And underneath me, all the strawberries, they're starting to spread out a little bit. And the raspberries, I'm sure those are getting big over here. Those are getting close, looking real nice. And then the blackberries, those are after the raspberries. So many flowers in the blackberries. That's a beautiful blackberry bush right there, in my opinion. And it's thornless, don't worry. So you're okay if you bump into it. And then right here, we've got this apple tree with uh, a couple different grafts on it. Some of the apples look pretty good, but a lot of them got bit by the curculio. That thing is just relentless, that bug. So we're gonna try to prevent it as much as we can in the future. And we're just gonna try to get what we can out of these trees. But this peach tree, holy, it should be a nice harvest on this one this year. And in the back there, I've got a current that's absolutely loaded. It's gonna be a nice producer for us. And then we also have this bed back here which is doing real well. You can see how there's a good amount of sun in this section. So I'll come out here at different parts of the day and see where the sun is hitting and then I'll just make sure I put beds in or plant stuff in those sections. So I kind of let the area talk to me to tell me where to plant stuff. So this thing is absolutely loaded with currants. Looks like we have some dying right here. I'm gonna cut that out immediately. And we've got a bunch of currants on these. So I'm excited for this harvest. And then I've got a pawpaw tree that's coming up from seed right here. So that's nice to see. Let me take you to the side garden where even more berries are coming in. I'm in the side garden now, next to a bunch of these blueberries. Look at the size of them. They're getting huge. 
So hanging out next to them, I can't wait to start harvesting some of the blueberries, but I've got them all surrounding me and apple tree above me. Right next to me, this is the red fleshed apple, the Almada red, it's got so many apples on it this year. So the Curculio hasn't hit this one as hard, but it does have some bites, like these half moon bites, that's from the plum Curculio, that right there too, so. We'll see if we can get some though. It's, the tree is looking fantastic. It's got more apples than it ever has though. And below me, this blueberry, this is one of the blueberries that has a huge blueberries on it. So these things are like quarter sized. So when they're ripe, they're massive. It's like such a treat to have huge blueberries to throw into your mouth like that. Really get nice juicy ones. Then this apple tree is looking the best it ever has. The plump curculio got this a little too, but I can see the, the color of the apples and the, the fuzziness on the outside is just showing me that the tree is really healthy this year. So this one isn't bit at all, this apple. So really nice looking apples, best they've ever looked. And we bring you back to the other backside of this garden too. Just like the other food forest, this one has filled up a lot in the last couple of years, but that's why you gotta invest. The years go by so quick and it can make a big difference, just a couple of years. This tree is loaded too, this is the wine sap. This has probably the best apples that we've ever had on the property. So we're gonna hope this one does really well this year also. And then again, just keep the common theme of the blueberries because I love eating them so much. I don't know how many times I could say it. And then right here, we've got the elderberry. So this one's a good medicinal too. And then the black cap raspberries. We've uh, pruned them, not pruned them up, staked them up this year. So it's allowed them to get more light, more airflow. And the amount we're gonna be able to harvest is it's gonna be insane. So we're gonna have a lot to give away because when it comes down to it, I'm a grower. I love growing all this stuff. I love eating it, but I'm not a processor. So I don't like doing all that stuff. So I just have to end up giving it away. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tucker are gonna go through now and harvest a bunch of this stuff. We're not gonna show all of it on film though because a lot of it's greens and stuff. We don't want it all wilting on us. And we made the pledge this year because of all you, because your constant encouragement and because of this opportunity we have with all the space, we're not gonna be selling any of it. We're gonna be giving it all away. We talked about it before that this food, this is our greatest persuasion tool to get others gardening and others growing their own food. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low too. And don't forget, whenever you're shopping on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. It helps us out a lot. We'll see you guys real soon on the next one. Tuck and James, we 